Good Wednesday morning, St. Matthews. And this afternoon, or I should say today, later today, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., remember that the nave will be open for prayer. But at this time, let us go to God's altar in morning prayer. As has been the occasion while we have been observing morning prayer, we will begin on page 76, 76 in your books of common prayer. Under the headline, Lent, Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And now turning the page, on to page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, on to page 80, under the heading, The Inventory and Psalter. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On to the following page, 81, under the heading, In Lent. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. And now turning the page to page 82, at the bottom of the page, let us say together the Ubalate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God he himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm that is appointed for today is Psalm 129. Psalm 129. Let us read it together in unison. Psalm 129. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, let Israel now say. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let them be put to shame and thrown back. All those who are enemies of Zion, let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it can be plucked which does not fill the hand of the reaper, not the bosom of him who binds the sheaves, so that those who go by say not so much as, The Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, on to our readings that are appointed for this morning. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. We've been reading along in Exodus for several days now. Chapter 7, verses 8 through 24. Exodus 
chapter 7, verses 8 through 24. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Perform a wonder, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, and it will become a snake. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did as the Lord had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and they became snakes. But Aaron's staff swallowed up theirs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water. Stand by the river bank to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that was turned into a snake. Say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you to say, Let my people go, so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now you have not listened. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. See, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall be turned to blood. The fish in the river shall die. The river itself shall stink and the Egyptians shall be unable to drink water from the Nile. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over its rivers, its canals, and its ponds, and all its pools of water. Say, So that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout the whole land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and of his officials, he lifted up the staff and stuck and struck the water in the river, and all the water in the river was turned into blood, and the fish in the river died. The river stank so that the Egyptians could not drink its water, and there was blood throughout the whole land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts, So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them. As the Lord had said, Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not take even this to heart. And all the Egyptians had to dig along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the river. Here ends the reading. And now... Turning back into the office, let us read Canticle 14. Canticle 14 together in unison. It may be found on page 90 in your Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 19, Kyrie Pantocrator. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring. You made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. 
for all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages who ages. Amen. And now, returning to our daily readings. Our New Testament epistle reading that is appropriated for today is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 through chapter 3, verse 6. Chapter 2, 14 through 3, 6. Thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing Him. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many. But in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity, as persons sent from God and standing in His presence. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation, recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter written on our, on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, our, competent, our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And now turning back into the daily office, let us respond to the New Testament epistle with canticle... It's Canticle 16. Canticle 16, which may be found on page 92 in your Books of Common Prayer. Benedictus Dominus Deus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to His people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of the servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now, our Gospel reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Jesus left Capernaum and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him. And as was his custom, he again taught them. 
Some Pharisees came to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of hearts, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear ones, in lieu of a homily this morning, I wanted to share some really good news with you. One of our parishioners has been in the hospital in the ICU. We've had fears that maybe she had the coronavirus. However, today, as just a little bit before coming back up to the church for, you know, for this recording of morning prayer, I, I have learned that she has gone home from the hospital And though we are in Lent, alleluia, alleluia. We're going to make it through this, friends. We're going to make it. And now, turning back into the daily office, let us turn to page 96, 96, in your books of common prayer. And let us say together the Apostles' Creed. That's found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On to the top of the next page. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A may be found at the bottom of that same page, 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give people, give, excuse me, give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now the collect of the day will be the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent, this past Sunday. 
Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now back to the office as we are moving to the end of morning prayer. Turning the page to page 100, a collect for grace is located at the top of that page. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your prayers, your petitions, your thanksgivings, your intercessions at this time. Praying for Jerry Wyndham. want to pray for our friend Mark Eich, who's been working in the health care, in, in, has been working in health care during this coronavirus epidemic time. I pray that God will protect him and all of our parishioners who work in that same health care industry. Ellen Clem comes to mind. And others, I'll try not to name everyone. Because I'll surely forget someone. And now, Father Sam's prayer that he has offered for us during this time. I weave a silence. I weave a silence onto my lips. I weave a silence into my mind. I weave a silence within my heart. I close my ears to distractions. I close my eyes to attractions. I close my heart to temptations. Calm me, O Lord, as you stilled the storm. Still me, O Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Amen. Now continuing on page 101. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now on to page 102. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, St. Matthews, take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. And I'll see you in the morning for prayer. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in the believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.